Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie Dog Pounds, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. The movie begins at Enola Vale Youth Correctional Center, where three boys were being processed by Superintendent Mr. Sands. Davis, a 16-year-old caught with narcotics intending to resell them. Angel, a 15-year-old repeat offender involved in assault and auto theft. And Butch, who had assaulted a correctional officer, were all told to remove their belongings. Mr. Sands briefed them on the rules. No smoking, no alcohol, no pornographic content, and no gang activities. He also mentioned that if they had any questions, they should report to Officer Goodyear. Just then, Officer Goodyear arrived but was reprimanded by Mr. Sands for being late though he didn't seem bothered. Goodyear then escorted the boys to their dormitory and explained the three levels within the center. They could move to level two by proving they were ready to re-enter society, which came with privileges and a special sports uniform. However, misbehavior would result in an orange uniform and a trip to a special unit. After this briefing, the boys moved to the cafeteria, where Banks, one of the inmates serving as cooking staff, was intentionally mean to Butch, hinting that he knew why Butch was there. After the meal, the boys did their wash-up and went to bed at Officer Goodyear's command. The boys were woken up the next day by Goodyear. They were first made to make their beds, then mop the floors. Banks and his minions approached Davis and bullied him into giving them his boots. Banks and his gang also spat at Butch from the stairs, not trying to be discreet. After their morning chores, they had breakfast. That night, Banks and his guys gagged Butch and beat him up. The next morning, the boys made their beds and stood for inspection. Goodyear noticed Butch had a black eye and asked him about it, but Butch lied, saying he slipped and fell in the dark. Goodyear knew better and threatened to put Butch in solitary if he didn't tell the truth, but Butch stuck to his story. After washing up, the boys were taken outside to do some construction work. Everyone was handed a shovel, except for Banks, who was given a lift fork. Goodyear took Butch to Mr. Sands, who asked the same question as Goodyear about Butch's black eye. Butch didn't cooperate. Since he had been transferred for assaulting a correctional officer and was now found with a bruised face, it seemed right to isolate him. However, Butch still refused to rat out Banks. Later, Banks approached Davis and offered him some coke. Being a druggie, Davis didn't hesitate to take a sniff. He noted that the coke felt different but continued anyway. Once he was high, Banks painted on his face and went through his pictures, teasing him about his mother and how she called them, Daddy, after visiting. Davis groaned and screamed for his mom all due to the effect of the drug. Davis had to crawl for help, and Goodyear found him and helped him up. He was made to stand in the shower to flush the drugs out of his system. Afterward, he was taken to solitary confinement. Butch saw this from his own solitary cell. Life continued in Enola Vale, with narcotics being distributed discreetly. Davis and Butch were eventually released from solitary. Banks' minions were playing tennis and purposely picking on Davis. When he spoke back, they covered the CCTV camera and tried to swing at him until Butch stepped in and beat them up. He then asked for Banks' whereabouts. When told, he went with Davis and asked him to keep watch. Butch approached Banks and beat him until his face was unrecognizable, with blood smeared all over. Davis got his boots back. Goodyear found Banks' minions and asked who did it to them, but they didn't mention anyone. Goodyear still approached Butch. He wasn't stupid. He knew it was retaliation. Butch played dumb when asked, but Goodyear pushed him even though Butch warned him not to. Butch was aggravated, but he controlled himself and didn't swing his arms. Davis's mom came to visit. She asked if he was still being picked on, but Davis said he handled it. She informed him that she had sued the correctional center, but Davis didn't seem happy about it. Davis aggressively walked away from his mom, even as she called out to him, saying she wanted to help. Angel was also visited by his father, who spoke about missing him, but Angel didn't believe him not when he wasn't doing anything to help. The scene shifts to a guy named Frank telling Butch that someone named Shadow wanted to see him for unknown reasons. They were headed to an anger management class with Butch in attendance. Their teacher, Miss Biggs, made them grade their day and talk about what made them angry. However, everything got disrupted when Frank and another inmate almost started fighting. Butch got a hold of one of the guys distributing drugs in the center and took everything from him. He didn't like anything sneaky, and today was his day. That night, the boys asked Davis to share some of his women's stories. He started telling them about a time when he had the worst case of blue balls, but his girlfriend was on her period. He was downstairs smoking and watching TV when his girlfriend's mom showed up. She took off her coat, revealing, in his words, quite tempting boobs. She sat beside him and even asked for a drag of his smoke, and he noted she had very succulent, juicy lips. 
After she was done, she bid him good night, but he took the hint and sneaked upstairs. Davis continued his story, and all the boys erupted with excitement from the explicit tale. The next day, they were out for pee. Their coach announced they would play dodgeball, emphasizing the need for teamwork. They split into two teams, but the coach wasn't happy with the distribution because it lacked variety. He reminded them that if they were different, they wouldn't be in the same dog pound. They were all equals here. They mixed up further, and by the end of the game, Davis helped his team win against Butch's, earning praise from his teammates. Butch, Davis, and another inmate named Frank teased Angel about his mom, asking if she was attractive since she never visited. Only his father did. Goodyear then called Butch to the Enola Vale head office, where Mr. Sands was also present. The head officer explained that the officer Butch had assaulted was discovered to be an abuser, suggesting that Butch might have reacted to being abused. They had also reviewed Butch's record and found that he would have been set for release in a week if not for the assault. So, they gave him a chance. If he behaved well for two weeks, he would be released. They also asked about his plans after leaving the center, and he told them about his dreams of going to circus school. The boys were in the cafeteria eating when one of them slashed the face of another inmate, the guy from whom Butch had seized the drugs. Butch noticed a smirk on another guy's face and knew who had called the shot. The correctional officers stripped all of them of their clothes and searched their belongings but found nothing. Butch found the smirking guy later and choked him with a cloth as a warning before letting him go. Goodyear asked Mr. Sands if he could skip work the next day for his kid's birthday party, but Mr. Sands refused. This refusal angered Goodyear throughout the day. Later, Frank, Butch, Davis, and Angel were painting a wall, and the conversation turned to the names of any girls they had pulled. Butch ended up mentioning Miss Biggs. They asked him to describe her naked, and he did, leading Angel to sketch what she looked like naked. Goodyear, aggravated after a phone call with his wife, noticed the drawing. He asked who did it, and Angel admitted to it. Goodyear tried to discipline him, but his anger led to Angel's head being hit on an iron bar, causing him to pass out. Butch rushed to Angel, and Mr. Sands appeared. Butch screamed at Goodyear to explain what he did, but Goodyear just stood there, and Butch was cuffed while Angel was rushed to the hospital. Banks' minions, whom Butch had beaten, had recovered and targeted Davis, beating him up. Goodyear called the hospital where Angel was taken, and it turned out that Angel was dead. One of Banks' minions then forced himself on Davis and killed him. Despite all of Davis's screams, they didn't let him go. Butch was released from solitary, and when Davis tried to talk to him in the cafeteria, Butch acted almost rude. That night, Davis crawled out of bed and rang the bell, begging to call his mom, but the officers refused, saying it was too late. He cried himself to sleep. The next day, everyone in the cafeteria went on a hunger strike, and it seemed Davis was dead. Soon, chaos erupted as the inmates turned against the officers. Mr. Sands ordered the officers to neutralize the inmates. The officers beat, shot, and even threw tear gas at them, but it didn't stop the rebellion. Frank showed Butch a way out of the center, and when Butch made it out, he felt a moment of bliss. The movie ends with one of the officers finding him, smacking him with his correctional stick, and dragging him back inside. Subscribe for more daily videos. Your support, likes, shares, and subscriptions mean a lot. See you in the next video.